Hey guys, so it's time to get back to one of my projects that's been stalled for quite a while. Remember that DIY backup project refresh I started in 2021? Yeah, it's become 2022 already for a while. So let's get back to that and finish the series. It's time since the old hardware that has been in place since 2017 is starting to fail and well, that's a great motivator, if any. So, it's mostly the server hardware that is starting to fill, not really the hard disks themselves. So I will still reuse the existing disks that are in the current setup, which are 5 times 10 terabyte Iron Wolves drives from Seagate. Those have been running great all this time. Also, the software setup we've ran over the past years is still the best I can think of, so I'm basically going to be rebuilding or transplanting that to a new hardware box or server. And, well, the goal of this series is to take you guys along in a few videos to show you the setup and why and how and how to build it yourself if you wanted to. If you followed along with the previous two videos, this video might feel a bit redundant, but I wanted to do a quick rehash of everything before we started again. In the first video that I released of this series, we talked about the setup and mostly the why and how I ended up building this solution. Why not take the basic or easy route and use some existing cloud vendor, which is certainly much easier? Well, it's mostly cost inspired, especially if you have a lot of data, cloud quickly becomes expensive. And since it's not that hard to build this setup, the amount of savings over multiple years is well worth it versus a public cloud solution. Then after the first video, uh, in between video one and two, we did a live stream building the new server with some older, but I thought still good, hardware into a new chassis. And then we did the second real video, which was about the Proxmox install and setting up the most basic stuff in Proxmox. But that's also where this series kind of halted. The hardware I used initially was already a few years old, like I mentioned, and well, it turns out wasn't that reliable anymore as I thought it was. So the new case and power supply, however, were great. The, this case is one I got from AliExpress and it comes with eight times SATA hot swap base and space for a micro ATX board. So after a little while, I decided it was enough to scrap the old hardware idea and replace all of the internal hardware for new components. So I kept the case and the power supply that I already bought new. To do this, I bought a brand spanking new Intel Core i5-12400 and motherboard. I reused some old DDR4 memory kit and built that into a chassis in yet another live stream. Uh, I'll have all of that linked down below. Since then, it's been running great, but as things go, I've been busy with some big projects behind the scenes, and they're almost ready to be revealed, but... So, that project got moved to the background again. But, as I said in the intro, now that the old setup is starting to fail, it's time to get this finished. And, you know, you guys have waited long enough too. Now then, this video was basically to catch everyone up who didn't see the live streams to where we are now, or maybe introduce some new followers to the project. I mean, everyone needs backups, right? <laughs> so let's take a quick look at the fan replacement I did and then also run through some of the other stuff so everyone is caught up. And in the next video, we'll be able to set up the Minio S3 storage server to which the backup client will connect. If that is news to you, go back and watch the first and maybe the second episode in this series too. There's a YouTube playlist, which explains how this setup is going to work. There'll also be an article, but I'm not sure it'll be done when this video is released. Right, so first thing that is new is the fan swap I did. The chassis comes with 4 times 8 millimeter Molex connected fans, and I replaced all of those for Noctra models. Although the stock fans weren't horrible, they were certainly present, and with them being the Molex type, there was no real easy way to slow them down. To install or replace the fans with the Noctra fans, you need to disassemble the chassis a little bit, 
but luckily it's all built together with screws. This meant that after removing a bit of the frame, you can actually bend back part of the uh, frame itself uh, to be able to access the back part of the drive base. There you need to take off a metal cover to, uh, to unscrew the old fans and attach the new ones. All in all, it's a pretty easy swap and using the included two fan to one PW PWM headers that comes with the Noctua, Noctua fans, I hooked it up in pairs and gave each their own fan port, which then is controlled by the motherboard. Uh, ramping up and slowing down the fans depending on the temperature. Another reason to do the swap is my experience with Noctua reliability. Over the years, I've basically never had a Noctua fan fail on me, where other brands certainly have. Since this chassis is going to be running somewhere tucked away in a corner, the peace of mind is also worth the extra investment for me. But enough about the fans, we almost can't hear those now, while cooling is still great. Perfect. Let's quickly talk about the replacement hardware I installed. As I mentioned, this is now an Intel Core i5-12400, which gives me more than plenty of power for the purpose of this server, while still being very energy efficient. I'm using it on a ASRock Z690M Phantom Gaming 4 motherboard. This might seem like an odd choice because of the Z690 chipset. We're not going to do any overclocking or something like that. But it was Micro ATX and I paid 155 euro for it, which really isn't that much. The CPU and motherboard support integrated graphics, which works fine over the HDMI port, and this basically leaves all PCIe slots free. Now, I wasn't going to need those because this motherboard also has a Wi-Fi card slot, or as they call it, a M.2 key E for Wi-Fi slot. And I used that to add a little 2 times SATA 600 controller card to up the available SATA ports from 4 to, well, 6 in total. It's connected using a x1 PCIe Gen 3 link, giving it close to 1000 megabytes a second. Perfectly fine for two hard drives, or especially for, for one, as I'm going to be using it since I'm going to have five hard drives in total, four in the motherboard, and one on the little extension card. Proxmox has native driver support for it and sees it as just another HACI controller, so CFS has direct control over the disks, just like the motherboard ports, and even smart information and such works just fine. So if you have a little server and it has a Wi-Fi slot and or you can't you don't have or you can't use the PCI slots or PCIe slots, uh, that is a great little card to use to get some more SATA ports for storage. Continuing with storage, for boot and VM storage, since the motherboard has 2 times M.2 slots, I used two 1 terabyte NVMe SSDs that I used before in my Chia farm. I used the drives to generate all the plots, so it did get a lot of wear, but I added them in a ZFS mirror as the boot drives, which, well, gives me plenty of storage, even if I wanted to run a few VMs. As mentioned, these SSDs were used for Chia plotting, but as you can see here, they still have both have 50% or about of their life remaining. So for the purpose of a boot drive and maybe a few VMs, they're going to last for years and years. If you'd like to see the build of the new hardware in the chassis, please check the second live stream. Of course, also linked down below. Great. Okay, now that we've got all that covered, you're all updated to what the current status of the project is, especially hardware-wise. While I'm talking, I'm quickly showing you how to update Proxmox to the latest version using the GUI, and invisible from this, I also made sure to install the latest BIOS update to the board. As a last thing, let's configure my temporary disks I have in there into a ZFS pool, which we'll be able to use in the next steps. Since I'm using really old 2TB disks, of which some have already failed before, I used to have 8, now I have 4, I'm going to make something that is stupid, and that's a 4-way mirror. These disks are only intended for the video series, after which I'll remove them and replace them with the disks using the current server. Those are running in a Z-Ray 2, so that's pretty safe, and since it's running ZFS, I can just take the disks out, put the disks in a new server, run a simple import command, and everything transfers over automatically. And well, that's it really for this video. 
I just wanted to do a quick update so everyone's caught up to where we are now, and the next video will be about installing the S3 storage server part on the server. Then after that, we'll do a video about connecting Minio as a backup client to the server, and then most of the basic setup is already complete. There are probably going to be some additional videos uh, for optional steps you can take or some additional stuff, but I'm going to try and get these basic videos out there soon. So I hope to see you back for that. And well, that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.